By the end of today's video, you will have a simple automation system that will hand you proven ideas for YouTube content on a silver platter. All you have to do is click a button and you will know instantly what video to make next to help you go viral. The system analyzes what's working for others and turns them into new ideas perfect for you. Use the system to go faster and get more engagement with way less effort. I'll walk you through this beginner automation step by step so you can build it for yourself today. Let's hop right in. If you want to learn how to go from beginner to expert with AI automation and start making $5,000 a month with your AI agency, I've started a school community where you can get access to all of my tools and resources and the workflow that we build today. You hear all the workflows that you have access to with N8N and Make.com. And I'm even launching a course all about building your personal brand and positioning yourself as an expert and authority in your field. We're going to keep today's video super simple. We're going to get a video from YouTube. We're going to extract the transcript from it using a basic HTTP request. I will show you exactly how to do it. And then we're going to use ChatGPT to generate some new ideas for us. And then at the end, we're going to store everything inside of an Airtable database so you can reference it at any time and execute the workflow from the beginning. And you can see this is going to come through here. It's going to grab the video from YouTube and all the statistics. It's going to grab the transcript from Rapid API. It's going to clean that transcript up. It's going to generate new ideas for you, and it's going to store it all back inside of Airtable. So if I come back into Airtable, you can see we have a brand new record that has the video ID, the title, the description of the video, all of the tags for the video, views, likes, comments, the new thumbnail, the new transcript, and all of the new video ideas based off of the new video. You can run this as many times as you like, and now you have an unlimited factory for new content ideas. Let's hop into N8N and let's get started building this thing. We're probably going to hop back and forth between N8N, Airtable, and ChatGPT to get everything going for us. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and click the plus, and we're just going to trigger this flow manually. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a set module. So I'm just going to go ahead and click set, type this in up here. Basically, this allows you to kind of define any sort of variable that you want or even multiple variables. Today, the thing we basically just need is the video ID and that's going to be coming straight from YouTube. We could link this up dynamically, but since today's a beginner build, I'm just gonna show you how to grab the video ID directly from YouTube so you can just drop it in here. So we could come over to like Liam Otley's channel. He's one of the biggest AI creators in the space. And let's just grab this video here. It's like only 12 minutes long. It's not too long for us. I didn't want to pull out something that has too long a transcript. This is eight AI sales automations that feel like cheating. And he shares with us some proven systems. So the video ID is up here at the top just after this equal sign. And so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to grab this right here. I'm going to come in and I'm going to copy this. And I'm just going to paste this in video ID. So now if I just go ahead and click execute step, you can see that we're piping out the video ID right here. And it's always good to name everything. We'll, we'll just call this YouTube analyzer. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click this. And I'm going to say set video ID. Go. The next thing I want to do is I want to get some of that basic information, just like the title and the description of the video, and then we're going to extract the transcript. So what's really great is that N8N actually has a really awesome built-in YouTube node, and we can go ahead and we can use this today. So we can just come down here and we can just do get a video. You can see here that this is the field that we want to use. This is the video ID field. And if you don't know how to connect YouTube to N8N, I have a video on my channel. I'll leave it somewhere up at the top that shows you how to connect anything Google related, Google Drive, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and YouTube to N8N. So make sure you check that out. So what we can do here is we can just drag this in and we can pipe this in here. And now if I were to go ahead and execute this step, you can see that in like just a second, we pretty much have all the information we need from the video. We have the title. We have the full description from the video. We even have the tags that they use. So maybe this is something we can save too, just for reference later. When we want to create new videos, we can kind of like maybe do some research around these tags. If you come into the schema view, it's a little bit easier to see. You even have access to all the thumbnails, which we can go ahead and we can pull in. Then if you scroll down here, we actually have some more information about all the stats, like the view count, the likes. There's no favors, but we do have the amount of comments that this video has. So this is important for us later. If we wanted to kind of like sort things by the most views or the most comments, we can see where the engagement is and maybe we can create our content from that. Cool. So now is a good time to just kind of start thinking about our database structure and kind of start setting everything up in Airtable so that we have a place to store this at the end of the day so we can come back and reference it later. So I'm just going to hop into Airtable over here. I'll leave a link in the description where you can sign up totally for free if you don't already have an account. Once you're in here, we're just going to go ahead and click create, and we're going to start a new base totally from scratch. I'm just going to go ahead and close this, and I'm just going to go ahead and name this the same, YouTube Analyzer. And I'm just going to delete this field because we don't need it. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and change this to video ID, and we'll be able to store the video ID that we choose from here. So let's start thinking about, like, what are the fields that we're going to need? So the first thing that we're going to need is title. We want the title of the video for sure. We don't need assignee. We're not going to need status and I'll keep the attachments field because it's actually kind of cool to store the thumbnail. So maybe if you're creating thumbnails, you can create, you know, something similar to the videos that you're scraping. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to duplicate this field. We can call this description. 
And we might as well go ahead and insert to the right. And I think the only other thing that we need is, well, we can make one more long text field if we want. We can just say tags. I don't know if you want them. Just know that this is an option. We can come in here. You can insert to the right. And we can choose a number field for this. And we can do like views. And it's going to do this because we're not going to have, um, you know, 1.3 views. It's going to be a whole number. We'll duplicate this. We can call it views, likes. Duplicate this one more time, and we'll call this comments. So now we pretty much have all the fields that we need. I'm just going to rename this field to thumbnail. Maybe one other thing we'll store in here. We'll just have the transcript, and we'll make another long text field. So we can actually store the entire transcript in here if we want it. We can analyze it later. And the last thing we can add at the end here, we'll just duplicate this one more time, and we can just call this like new ideas. Maybe this is where we're, we'll store our list of brand new ideas. So this is looking pretty good. This is kind of all set up and ready to go. So now we're going to come back into N8N, and the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to get the transcript from this video. I'm using this YouTube transcript scraper from Rapid API. I'll leave a link in the description where you can go ahead and grab this. If I come over to the overview and we can go into pricing, you can see you can get up to 100 requests per month totally for free. So if you're not scraping too many videos, this is a great free option. And in order to find this, you would just come up to the top, go to YouTube transcript. Basically, it's this first one up here. I've already subscribed to this, but there is a big blue button up here that will say like subscribe to the API. You just need to click this to get started. What's really cool about Rapid API is that they create these curl requests for you, which is this over here, which is basically how to set up the request. They've already done all of the work for you. So you don't need to like bother figuring out how to type in all of this stuff in N8N. You can just kind of steal it from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click copy. If we come back into N8N, we can click the plus here and type in HTTP to make an HTTP request. So now, instead of having to figure out what method are we using, what's the URL, do we need to toggle any of these toggles? Like, who knows, right? We can just go ahead and click import curl and paste in that curl request here, and it actually already includes your API key. So I'm just going to go ahead and send that off. And then here you can see we still have this video ID, which is the same value that we need to grab from earlier. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete what we have in there now and change this field to expression. And if I come all the way back to the beginning with set video ID, now I can just drag in this video ID from here. So I can click execute step and it'll take a couple seconds because it's like a 12 minute video, but then we'll have the entire transcript that we can pull from to do our analysis of and generate brand new ideas. Now I am going to teach you something slightly more advanced and we're going to use ChatGPT to help with this. You can basically see that this has kind of like broken the transcript up into all of these different like little chunks. I actually don't know why it does that, but this is kind of how it comes in. I guess it's maybe just easier to process the data that way. But what's cool is that we can actually use ChatGPT to help us kind of like convert it into like a normal looking transcript. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to switch this to JSON really quick. And I'm just going to grab like some of this. And I'm going to come into ChatGPT and I'm going to say I'm working in N8N. I have a YouTube transcript, but it's all broken up. I need you to create a code node function. I'm going to show you all about the code node. I have no idea how to code, but the code node in NNN is one of the most powerful things that you can use. And I use ChatGPT all of the time to help me figure out how to kind of like pre-process or process data that combines all the transcript text. And I'm just going to say into something, I'm just going to say into something normal looking. And I'm just going to say, here's the input. So now I'm just going to paste in kind of what it looks like so that you know, ChatGPT kind of understands the structure that we're working with. So now you can see here, ChatGPT is going to work for us and it's writing all of this code. It's actually not even that much code. So let's hope that this works first try. Sometimes it works. Sometimes you have to have a little bit of back and forth. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go ahead and click the plus. I'm going to type in code, grab this code note here, and I'm literally just going to paste in the code directly from ChatGPT. And then I'm going to click execute step. And this should take almost no time at all. So you can see here that literally in like two seconds, this basically just kind of like put the entire transcript together for us in a format that we can actually understand. Awesome. And I'm just going to go ahead and rename this, get transcript. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to say clean transcript. Super helpful to label everything, especially like, you know, once you go back and look at this flow later, you want to make sure you understand what everything is. So from there, if we come back here, we've basically done like these first two steps, right? And the only thing we need to do now is generate some new ideas. So I'm going to come back into ChatGPT and I'm going to have it actually generate an AI agent prompt for us that we can use to analyze these transcripts. So I'm going to say, I need a prompt for an AI agent. Its job is to analyze a video transcript. I'm also going to say title and description and then generate 
well, I'm going to say, I'm going to say identify any high value, high impact moments, important quotes, or anything else of interest. From there, it needs to generate, let's say, 10 possible new ideas for YouTube videos. I'm going to go ahead and click enter and let's see what it says. So this is a prompt that ChatGPT is writing for us. And it's always good to think critically about what ChatGPT is putting out. This may be a great prompt first try. We may need to tweak it a little bit. Let's see. You're a YouTube content strategist trained to identify high impact opportunities for existing content. Your task is to analyze the following three inputs. Transcription, title, description. Great. Your goals. Identify high value, high impact moments. Pull out important quotes, unexpected insights, or provocative statements. That's cool. I see. I didn't even type unexpected insights or provocative statements. That's great. Detect recurring themes, strong opinions, frequently mentioned problems, or potential content gaps. Then, based on your analysis, generate 10 original YouTube video ideas. And then it gives us a format for us, which is really cool. Each idea must be directly inspired by the source content, structured around a strong hook or core question, specific enough to be actionable, designed to attract attention and drive engagement. And the output is a brief summary of the most important takeaways. So here's the analysis, which is cool because if we store this, we can reference this later if we need new ideas. And then two, a list of 10 new video ideas with clear, compelling titles. So I'm just going to go ahead. This seems like a pretty good starting point, And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and we'll come back in here. So now I'm going to click the plus and I like using the basic LLM chain, which kind of gives you access to all of the large language models. So if you have a preference to ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini or DeepSeek, you can just go ahead and use this and connect up whichever model you have a preference for. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click define below. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to add the system prompt down here. And I'm just going to go ahead. I like working with expression because you can kind of just come in here and paste it in nice with all the formatting. And now we have our system prompt all ready to go. So all we have to do now is we can come in here and I'll just do expression again. I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to say, what do we say we'd give it? We said we'd give it the title. We said we'd give it the description. And we said we would give it the transcript. So now I can come in here. I can come into YouTube. And basically, I can grab the title. I can put the title in here. I can grab the description and put the description in here. And you can see that on the right hand side, this is actually populating with all of the information. And then at the end, we have the transcript. And now I can go ahead and grab the transcript from the code note, which has the full transcript. Boom, this is a lot. That's the full transcript. Awesome. The last thing that we need to do before running this is just connect the model that we want to use. So I'm just going to go ahead and use OpenAI. Select my account here. I'll leave a video up at top. If you don't know how to get your OpenAI API key, I'll show you how to connect this up. All you have to do is basically come in here, click Create New Credential, and paste your API key in right here. We'll start with GPT-40 Mini for this. We may want to switch to 4.0. It may give us better output, but 4.0 Mini is super fast and super cheap. And I'm just going to call this Idea Generator. Go ahead and click Save. Super cool. Let's come in here and let's click Execute Step to kind of see what we come out with. This isn't super easy to read, but I'm just going to read it to you anyway. And then I wasn't planning on doing this, but we can actually use another code node to like format this like in just kind of like a nice appealing way. So here's just the analysis summary. High impact AI automation. The video discusses eight powerful AI automation systems that dramatically enhance sales, providing real world results and financial figures. There are strong testimonials. Each solution is backed by compelling anecdotes and statistics showcasing significant revenue growth, which illustrates the transformative potential of AI and sales. So that's cool. So this is just kind of like an analysis of it. We basically have frequent mention of lead response times, yada, yada, yada. There's emphasis on customization. Okay, cool. And then I think we have some um, kind of video ideas down here. So sales automation or sales annihilation. Are AI tools helping or hurting your business? Explore the potential pitfalls of over-relying on AI. That's interesting, taking like the opposite approach, right? How a missed call can cost you $2 million. The importance of instant lead response. So these are already like great high impact titles. Dive deep into the statistics of response time and discuss tactical methods to ensure no lead is neglected. So maybe we're getting to like AI voice agents or something like that that automatically respond to your clients for you. From zero to $220,000. Can AI systems really transform your sales in five weeks? Analyze case studies of rapid revenue growth, et cetera. So you get the idea. So this is cool. This is super, super helpful. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to say the format of this is kind of ugly. Can you create another code node function to make it prettier? I'm just going to go ahead and type that in. And then I'm going to paste in the format so, again, it understands what we're working with. 
I have a feeling that this is going to be too basic. Feeling is going to be too basic. Include some emoji or something. Just something to like spice it up a little bit. We want to make it a little bit fun to look at. Cool, we have a few. Okay, this is great. So let's go ahead and let's copy this and let's see what this comes out with. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab the code node again. I'm just going to go ahead and paste this in. Click execute step. And sometimes what I do here, so we got an error. And I'll always tell people that troubleshooting is like 90% of the job. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm just going to paste this error in with the screenshot. So we basically see everything. So markdown is not available in the environment. So here we go. We can see all this. It's replacing stuff for us. Whatever. I'm going to copy this now. Now it basically understands the format that we have. And now we should be able to just click execute. And we should have like a much nicer looking answer. Cool. So here we go. Now that I'm looking at this, this is actually isn't going to work because we just want to store this in Airtable. So I'm going to say I'm going to store this data in Airtable. I don't think this HTML formatting is going to work. Cool. So let's try this other formatting that it recommends. Great. Formatting with new lines. This looks good. Cool. I'm happy with that. We'll go ahead and we'll see what this looks like once we actually store it in the database. So the last thing we really need to do is we need to connect this up to Airtable. So I'm just going to go ahead, connect up to Airtable, and I'm going to do create a record. We're already connected to my Airtable account. I have another video on my channel that will show you how to connect Airtable to N8N. We're going to come in here, and we're just going to search for our YouTube analyzer base. It's going to be this one at the bottom here. And we're going to select the table. I'm going to do table one. Now we have all of the columns that we need. So what we can start doing is we can basically come in here. We can take the video ID, come into YouTube, we can grab the title, we can go ahead, we can grab the description. If we want, we can go ahead and we can even grab all of these tags. I'm not sure this array format is going to work. We might need to change this, but let's see if this works. And then if I come down here, I can come to statistics, I can do view count, I can do like count, I can do comments. I'll skip the thumbnail for a second because I want to save the transcript. So here's the clean transcript in here. And then I want to grab the pretty output for new ideas here. So for the thumbnail, we can come down in here and we might as well just grab the max res thumbnail. We're going to do this. And I know that Airtable prefers this like array format. So in order to convert this to a proper array format, we need to do the bracket and then the curly braces. We need to do quotes, URL, quotes, colon. Then if we come down here at the end, we need to do the curly braces again, and then another bracket. And now you can see we have this array format, which is actually what Airtable expects. So if I go ahead and I click execute step, this is what I thought might happen with all of the, the tags. And so if I come up here to the tags, inside the brackets here, I can just type two, and I can do two JSON string, and this would actually change this into something that Airtable can accept. Cool, so now if I hop over to our Airtable database, I can actually just go ahead and delete these empty rows. So we don't need them, but I can come in here, you can see we have the video ID, we have the title, we have the full description from the video, we have all of the tags, we have the view count, the like count, we have the comments, we even have the thumbnail. And then from there, we have the full transcript and we have all the ideas for our new video. Here's a summary and analysis. Here are all 10 video ideas with basically a title and kind of like an explanation of what this idea is. And so now you have 10 new ideas all ready to go. So now anytime you want to run this, all you have to do is come and find a YouTube video like this other one, like seven proven AI systems. Let's go ahead and click into this. Copy the video ID. Just come back into N8N. Go into the node right here. Replace the video ID. And just go ahead and execute the workflow from the beginning. And you can see this is going to come through here. It's going to grab the video from YouTube and all the statistics. It's going to grab the transcript from Rapid API. It's going to clean that transcript up. It's going to generate new ideas for you. And it's going to store it all back inside of Airtable. So if I come back into Airtable, you can see we have a brand new record that has the video ID, the title, the description of the video, all of the tags for the video, views, likes, comments, the new thumbnail, the new transcript, and all of the new video ideas based off of the new video. You can run this as many times as you like, and now you have an unlimited factory for new content ideas. If you thought this video was helpful, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to learn more about AI and automation, just hop over to the community. I'll see you over there.